All right. Yeah, you seen that? You seen that? I'm the wizard, man. <laughs> I'm the wizard. <laughs> <laughs> don't punch where they are. Punch where they will be. Yeah. Uh, I don't switch kick. I think switch kicking is dumb. But there is, there is, of course, there's sometimes where I do switch kick. In fact, there's a switch kick technique that was taught to me by Shane Faison from Fight Tips. I don't think he's done a video on it, so I'm going to steal it, and I'm going to make a video on it. With UFC 264 coming up, Poirier versus McGregor, everyone's talking about the calf kick, right? Because it was such an issue last time. Can Conor address the calf kick? I'm going to talk about how maybe the switch kick might be the key to Conor's victory. I think not only can it address the calf kick, but I think it can address their boxing. And I'm going to talk about how, like, why, like, southpaws versus southpaws is, like, the most screwed up thing in all of fighting. The mouse no doubt wants me to talk about Conor McGregor versus Dustin Poirier 3. That's what they want me to promote. But if you're coming to my house to watch the fights, you're coming to watch a Wonder Boy fight. But Wonder Boy showed us the basic way to deal with the calf kick when we were there. Obviously, everyone kind of gets it. Uh, I just need to square up a little bit. So I just turn this knee out. If homeboy's frying, frying me with those calf kicks, right? Boom. And a little power tip. You see what Nate's doing? See how he changed his levels a little bit? You can actually reach for If he didn't do that and you threw your calf kick, see he got kind of foot. If he drops his level, right? He gets more of the shin on there and way more ass behind it. One easy way, if that's kind of what he's going to, you know, he throws one, right? And I'm like, oh, God almighty, those don't feel good, all right? So then I kind of square up, I turn this knee out, so as he's throwing them, he'll uh, either meet that, and then it'll hurt him, or maybe at least make him decide not to throw it, or he has to set it up. The problem being, when I square up like that, I turn this guy out, I'm now in the line of fire from boxing. That's what we gotta worry about. Poirier's good boxing. Poirier has to worry about it too from Connor's big, bad left hand, but all the angles change in this screwed up southpaw versus southpaw thing. Because here's the, here's the, the rub. Here's the, the issue, my issue with southpaw versus southpaw. If I'm an orthodox fighter, you're an orthodox fighter, we spend 90% of our time training like this. Yeah. Right? If I'm a southpaw fighter, I spend 90% of my time training like this, you only spend 10% of your time training in practice like this. All right? If you switch southpaw, now we both only had 10% of our training time devoted to this stupid, terrible, mixed up scenario. Now obviously these guys are the highest level professionals. They are to the point where they can pay to bring people in to mimic styles and stances. You know, they can handpick their partners. But just generally, if you're beginner to intermediate, that's kind of why southpaw versus southpaw gets screwed up. The big problem for Connor is that Poirier's style of sharp boxing and uh, you know, good defense doesn't depend on open stance as much as Connor's style. Connor covering that hand and being very mobile and getting to his rear hand, him just trying to turn into a regular dude and do regular shit doesn't, doesn't benefit Connor. Connor doesn't do regular things. Connor does Connor things. So when you start uh, getting that calf kick going and I'm standing squared up and then the boxing starts coming, now I'm in trouble because these are angles that I'm not used to. Your jab becomes more dangerous my left becomes less effective. In case we don't know, switch kick, we're talking about switch kick, all right? Or switch kick. There's a little bit of a telegraph, it's sort of a traditional Muay Thai technique. You know, it's not highly favored by a lot of people. I hate it. I didn't start doing it till Shane showed me this technique, which I think can help Connor address Poirier's boxing. When you're only a southpaw and you're, or you're mostly a southpaw, you very rarely have to address a jab that comes from in betwixt your guard. Normally I'm like this, all right? So the, I'm, we're checking this hand and the jab just doesn't happen a whole lot. But if we're close stance, we're in the same stance as each other, the jab now becomes a weapon that we both have to deal with. Shane showed me this right here. It's a parry with this big distractionating move right here to disguise the footwork of the switch. Done all in unison, it looks like this, right? He jabs, boom. He knows what I'm gonna do. They won't. If you wanna use this, they, they won't know what you're gonna do. If they throw up this little thing here, it has a purpose. I, obviously, it adds to the power of the kick and balance and all that. But if it, this is a one two sort of situation, right? Whoosh. If it's a one two situation. Oh, one two. So you would throw a one two. Oh, I thought you were saying one two. No, you one two. Okay. All right? <laughs> One, two, 
The arm is in the way to block potential counters. I hate switch kicks, but this one's pretty good against a, a guy who's stepping into his jab. He jabs, boom, bop. It's pretty good, right? I'm, uh, he's throwing his calf kick, right? I made him regret that, now he's gonna jab, boom, bop. And that helps take advantage of Connor's mobility. Now, addressing the calf kick with the switch kick. I know what you're thinking. All right, go ahead, throw, throw, throw me a calf kick. Ooh, if I get real heavy on this back foot and you go to calf kick, all right, and I pick this thing up, you have to recover, yeah. all right? I can take advantage of my mobility if I have it, which Connor does, right, by being defensive on the back foot, right? He goes, woo, I pick it up, down, switch, payout. You can cover a lot of distance with this little, with this little like, little bird hop thing, right? Calf kick, once, boom, don't like that. Calf kick again, ooh, you don't like that. You try to box instead, switch kick. You go back to the calf kick, switch kick while you're recovering. All right, I'm trying to, Oh, I don't like that. All right, here comes another calf kick. Ooh, you don't like that. Here comes the boxing, boom, bop. Uh, maybe a one-two, do a one-two. There we go. And then, what's next? Calf kick. Oh, more calf kicks, right? And it might end up being more of a pendulum step. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. Give me the calf kick. All right, we could go, whoo, boom. We could go, right, whoo, whoosh. We could go, right, like go, again, again, all right. And cover a lot of distance backwards and forwards. I think that's the key to this thing. I think this is an irregular sort of fight between two irregular dudes. I think they're gonna have to do some irregular shit. <laughs> Speaking of irregular shit and Conor McGregor, I think he has a weapon that we've not seen. Cause you know what he does have? He does have a lead leg hook kick. And just like he pulled the shoulder strike out with Cowboy Cerrone, he'd been practicing some irregular stuff. I have a feeling that we're gonna see that. I have seen a clip of him talking about hook kicks to the leg. Wait. Like back, he was backstage with somebody. I'll have to try to find it to show it to you, but he was talking about, and it, he was talking about from open stance actually, uh, go back to Orthodox, because he said attack the VMO. He said it in a clip where he's talking about hook kicks to the leg. Yeah. And he has, he does a hook kick. It never lands. I don't know why he does that thing. So what do we got to do? I can't do this anymore because we're close to hand. So I got to box a little better. I got to have good defense. All right. shh, 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 shh. In and out. But you know what the problem is? He gets tired, right? He gets tired too easy. So he's got to learn to land his cross from these different angles. Now, that doesn't work. That would never work. That would have worked. Those don't work. That could be one way of addressing it. If he wants to land that big left, pretend this is my left. You go to throw that thing, and just plant and just sit on it. Someone goes to throw a leg kick, right? Boom! You got me there. I think he shouldn't abandon. I think he doesn't he doesn't look good when he tries to fight like this. Connor? Yeah. I think he should still be himself. Even though the stances are closed. Alright? <laughs> and speaking of how Wonder Boy, you know, we did a whole like session on this, and he showed us he showed us one secret way of dealing with calf kicks that I'm that I'm doing all the time now that I've never seen anywhere. I'm not gonna share it. I think he should. I think he should do a video on it. Uh, so I'll steal Shane's stuff, but I won't steal Wonder Boy's stuff. But I will show you how Nate Diaz deals with calf kicks too as a little bonus. Let's do that real quick. This is easy. All right. This is the Nate, Nate Diaz school. 
of addressing leg kicks and calf kicks. Come on. That's it. That's what you want to do? You just want to keep kicking my leg? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. You know what? Okay, go ahead. You feel cool doing that? Yeah. Do you feel like I approve of what you're doing? Probably not. Yeah, no, I don't. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, great. Doing that shit because you don't want to box with me, right? Come on, man. Let's fight, dude. Go. Do what you're going to do. Do what you're going to do. Come on. Come on. All right. That one didn't have as much on it. What's going on? What's going on, man? Come on. Kick my leg. Do you know why he doesn't want to kick my leg? Because he thinks that I'll think he's a punk if he keeps doing it. When people fight Nate Diaz, they like want his approval. <laughs> why did, if you ask me on Edwards, why did you stop kicking his leg? I don't think he'd be able to tell you. It was working flawlessly. Yeah. It was working perfectly. But something about that guy, when he looks at you and goes like, come on, dude. You're like, oh, okay. I'll fight more cooler. I'll fight in a more cooler way that Nate Diaz approves of. So the Nate Diaz way of addressing kicks is just to make them feel shitty for doing it. <laughs> I don't switch kick. I think switch kicking is dumb. Oh, I thought you were going to drift. <laughs> you have gum in your mouth? Yeah. Get the gum out of your mouth. Is that a, like a thing? Yes, it's a thing. It's unprofessional and chewing gum is unmanly. What? Unmanly? Unmanly. What, what do you mean? What do you mean? Chewing gum? Yeah. It's an unmanly pursuit.